<laughs> Woo! Come on, wait, 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 wait. That's when you can't find these shades. Oh, yes, I can. Wait there. Dream it. Believe it. Become it. Come on down. <laughs> Welcome to another live fight is right with myself, Spencer the Knowledge Fearon, and Baba Tundi Ajayi, the master genius. You know what? I'm so looking forward to this one. Right, look at this. Come uh, on. Mike on sports. He's just hollering man up on air. Cool girl's my guy. So big up yourself. Yes. Yeah, you know I mean, Elms. So many. No, big up. Massive salute to Mike because he's always been a supporter. And I like his show that he's doing as well. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. So we've got, big up, we've, got, we've got all those people coming in. This is one big universal family. People don't understand this part here, but I'm going to uh, make people know there's only one race that is the human race, and we are all a collective. And let your passion be your paycheck, but our energy, because our focus goes where the team goes, and it is actually on boxing. So our boxing family has no colour, but if you cut us, we don't bleed blood, we bleed boxing gloves, bro. <laughs> Yes, sir. Spence, I'm going to be honest with you. You know that when you, well, I know you don't, but you know that when you're getting ready to go on a first date, <laughs> you put, hold on, hold on. Bobby Wright, Jeez, let, me just say this. let me just say this. I have to big up Commander Bobby Wright of um, the, the, the British military. 99 pounds he just donated. Bobby, you just contributed. Bobby, you just contributed 10% to my to my mortgage. <laughs> right? <laughs> Tell me, you love me. Come on. Listen. Right? I want listen. I'm gonna tell you where I'm gonna tell you this one there. Bobby Wright follows me today. He says, Spencer, thank you and Tundi for the support. Um, I don't he said he, he was in a very, very dark place. Like he lost his father because his dad had a heart attack and fell asleep behind the wheel. Wow. Well, no, had a heart attack behind the wall and, and crashed his car, right? Um, and he lost his brother. He lost his brother a few years ago, two years ago, then he lost his dad. And he was in a dark place. Then he started to get on social media. He loves boxing. And he hooked up on with us. He was hearing your positive, crazy self every morning turn. He was hearing my little jargon and everything else. And he's just been one of those guys who's been a big, massive supporter. And today, he just got promoted in the military. Jesus. So, so as he's got promoted in the military, everything goes up with him. His pension goes up. Everything goes up for the guy. So when I'm hearing on this part here, people, like, I'm saying to people, keep on doing what you're doing in a positive light because you don't know who's listening. You do not know who you're infecting. Right? Right? And this is how it goes is this. Good energy is infectious. Right? Bad energy is infecting. Mm. There's a difference here. Hold the thing. So, right? So I'm saying the people who are out there who are supporting, this is just one man now who's just set off. So I want to see more people clicking in and sending money in, right? Because when I feel like I've got nothing but love and respect for this man, I've got nothing but love and respect for this guy. All of these little idiot trolls who go out and say anything bad about me, right? Big up Mike on Sports, 499, right? Um, Anybody says any piece of jargon or nonsense about me, this is the first man to run out and defend me. Right? A man who's in the military. I'm trying to say to people now that, you know I mean, let love, let, well, what's this? What's um, eight star B, what do you say? What's he say? Spence is a real knowledge. I'm a hardcore boxing fan and I can vouch for that. Respect Tundi and Spence, great people. They know they are they they know their rings in the boxing game. Come on, yeah, man. Listen, pick up yourself, eight star. Thank you so much for that. Like I'm saying to people, we're gonna big up Leon figures, keeps on all the time, always supporting. Like these are the things. It like you see these donations coming like church to mm. mm. coming like church. And the mm. thing about this. We ain't putting in the building in the building fund. We're trying to build up other people. Yes. Yeah? Because you have to love for your brother what you love for yourself. So it just means so much when I'm when I'm when I'm seeing this come through. It, I'm I'm so so grateful. Yeah, I mean I'm so grateful. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let me just go no, back to 
It's Friday. Uh, it's Friday for me. Uh, this is yeah. what's happened. Told you my so, six pack come back everything. I'm slim. <laughs> yeah, you will. You won't be slim if you keep eating that pizza, mate. I'll tell you that yeah, much. Listen, Tony, totally shut up. <laughs> I've got some food right there. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and let me just continue. Uh, is that it again? Old tight. Big up, Mister Late Show Forty Two. Thank you, sir, for the donation. And uh, we're really starting off with a bang today. And uh, I really appreciate all your donations because you know it's all energy. And uh, myself and Spencer, we do aim to put out what we expect to get back, which is positive energy. So your donations just make it, you know, all, all the better for us. And uh, we really appreciate it. But going back to Mr. Bobby Wright, this man without fail always reposts and reshares everything I post, always, day in, day out. And he's such a supporter. And um, I mean, I, was, I wasn't aware of, you know the, the 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 losses that he has suffered uh, recently, and it just shows me that he's connecting to an equal and opposite energy, which is a positive energy. And because of that, well, I didn't even know that. So, all credit to you, Bobby. I'm going to say it again, credit to you, Mr. Bobby Wright. Thank you for your continued support and defense of the master knowledge and the one and only Tunde Ajay, so big up Bobby, but yeah, I mean, where, where James Douglas. I've got big up James Douglas. <laughs> James, James Douglas. Douglas. I should call you Buster, right? <laughs> James God. Douglas, thank you so much, James Douglas, for the five pound donation up to the show. Um, I'm very, very grateful, no doubt. Gary, our producer, is Gary, Gary most probably is um, trying to sort out right now for um, Mark Breland. Um, because there could be a little technical glitch or something, but it's being sorted out right now. So we're just keeping the fire warm. Yeah, we're, we're not we're not bumping you. <laughs> Spencer, was, Spencer was on the phone twenty minutes ago, so it definitely is just a a technical um, um, issue with Mark. But we're trying earnestly to get Mark on straight away. I mean, I, I've been doing my research all day. I watched some great facts. Uh, Breeding against Stalin, uh, what one and two? I watched Hannigan fight. Uh, I watched um, Volbrecht when he won the world title. The guy's a tremendous fighter, and you can, you know what, Spence? You can see a lot of Deontay Wilder in Breeding or Bre okay, yeah. Our producer Gary just said he's on the way, guys. I've just spoken to him. Big up Gary, our producer. Right. Come on. You have to understand, it takes three people to do things. Yes. One man can't do everything because one man is not an island. Yes. One people to understand that. You know what I mean? You have to get, I had to, I had to hook up with Tundi Ajayi, right? Who, where there's is no hold bars. You have to hook up with Spencer Ferrell, there's no hold bars. And we have to hook up with, with, with our producer, Gary, who, <laughs> who, who, who's an exceptional producer, who, yes. we have to big him up. Tundi met him through an advert, but they was filming an advert with Tundi and, and, uh, and Anthony Yar. Yes. And from there, there's a synergy, and energy goes rip flows. I keep on saying uh, this. Let, let, me let me tell you something about right. the story about me and, and, and Gary. As you just said, we met up on a, on a shoot. Well, sorry, Tom, I'm not drinking from the greatest cup. I just want you to realize that now. Come on, come on. Well, I'm, I'm drinking from the greatest bottle. Yeah, for real. For real. <laughs> come on. So, yeah, so with, so with Gary, I met him and you know, I'm a, I've got an eye for talent. I think I have anyway. And, um, you know, I, I, I phoned Gary and I said, Gary, meet me in Stratford, uh, Westfields. Gary will bear me witness. We sat down. I said, Gal, well, we may not look like nothing right now, but I believe if you, myself, Spencer come together, we can create a platform. Yeah. Um, Mark Breen just sent me a text. He's on StreamYard right now. Come on. Come oh. on. Oh, so he says he's not looking him in. It's not what? He said it's not logging him in. So Gary should be talking to him now. I'm just sending him back a message. Yo, know, this is this is the thing of when you're going live. <laughs> yeah. This is not no little, yeah, gimmicks and da, 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 and all the rest of it. Because mm -hmm. I've been at bigger channels where we've been let down at the last minute by supposed superstars, right? Yeah. And because of this black book right here, my phone, I can just ring up someone yeah. else to jump in for somebody else. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? That so, that could happen today. 
Mark right. Breeden. No, no, no. No way it's going to happen. We got Mark Breeden. It's, it's uh, Gary should be talking to him right now and sorting it El out. Elms, Elms Tana says, send him the link directly. I'm, I'm sure Gary's doing that. But yeah, yeah. I was saying, I said to Gary, let's let's hook up. And here we are today. The fight is right, was created, and uh, we've had some wonderful guests on thus far. And I can't wait. I'm, I'm, as I said, as I was saying, it's one of them ones where you get, bro, I had to bring out the chain today because <laughs> I felt like I was going on a date because it's not often where, you know, you're humbled by the greatness of a fighter and the, and let me just say the humility humility of a, of a, of a person as well because Mark Breeden if, if anyone knows anything about his career he was always softly spoken um never arrogant always respectful and you know you're talking about someone that really done everything in the sport of boxing um and I know the fans online are really itching to ask him certain questions they want to know what I've won. They want yep, to know. Yep, yep. Um, Gary says he's on the phone with him now, getting him logged on. Come on. Wicked. Dream, it. Talking about. Dream it, believe it, become it. Now, if it was just me and Tony doing this thing now, we couldn't do it because we've got to be talking to you guys and I'll be on there trying to talk to a man that had to log on the team. Yes. Right? The Trinity. Free. The Trinity. Right. Boxing Talk TV says... Mark is a real OG. James Douglas, Tundi looking light skin today. Right in the kitchen. No, he's not looking light skin. Tundi's bleaching. You know what my jury is, bro. Let's tell it how it is. I've been down Peckham. I went down Peckham Hashi. I got my bleaching. Bleaching. Spill my tea, bro. Smash you. Yeah. So big up James Douglas. Bro, Bleach is the one. Bleach is the one. <laughs> yeah, big up Steve Bailey. Look at this. Jerome Gordon, five pound into the place. Big up Master Genius, Tony, oh, and the Knowledge Spencer. All day. Dream it, believe it, become it. Best boxing podcast. I'm telling you, you know why I know it's the best boxing podcast? Let me just say this now. Nobody were even wasn't 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 farting on Drew McKenzie. Come on, come right. on, talk it. Drew McKenzie touches our team. I said, Drew, come on our team. Bless the mic. Drew would say, oh, all right, Spen. Um, if you want to come on, I'll come on. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, a, I'm, a bit of a, I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to this stuff. I don't know really how it works and all the rest of it. But um, yeah, great. I'll come on it. As soon as you come on it, you see the little spies you're watching? Because not only on YouTube, but it's on Twitter as well. We get good numbers on Twitter. You know what I mean? Yes. show yes. so far. Um, we're capping off at about 10,000, right? Yeah. As soon as that goes on now, man get gaffed. Oh, boop, 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 boop. Now what happened? The spies who like to watch us, you know it's Rev. Rev, you know it's real talk. Now he's on he's on talk sport, right? Now, I'm happy for Duke because Duke's my guy. But Duke was saying, Spain, I don't know how you do it. Like, you're everywhere, even when you're sitting, even when you're sitting still. How do you do it, mate? I said, listen, I'm everywhere because I'm not Nelson's column. I'm not positioned yeah. in on. one period. You've got to be out there, bro. I said, bro, you're a free weight world champion. No, 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 you are. This is graceful. So we bust him. Everybody who loved the show, which I'm so grateful. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not, it's not, it's not um, how many numbers you get. It's how long the people are watching. Right? And are they engaged? And they are engaged. So that's what it is. Big up Matt McKenzie. He's asked um, Tundi, um, when is Annie Yard coming on the show? Last time I saw Annie Yard, he's eating burritos, bro. <laughs> yes. And he's on the show. <laughs> Adney's on the show when he comes off the beach <laughs> in Mexico. So Adney is out there really having uh, downtime. He can't wait to get back in the gym um, and, 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 and get things cracking again. But, you know, he deserves it. I said it before. You know, this is a young man that had a really, really tough 2020. And um, he deserves, you know, to just spend his time with his family. So God bless him. He's out on the beach. But he'll be coming on. Don't worry, he's coming on. And he's got his own YouTube channel now anyway. So maybe I might be going on there. Or maybe me and Spencer might be going on his YouTube channel. So big up. Thank you very much for the donation, Matt McKenzie. Yeah, big up, Matt McKenzie. Thank you. Very, very grateful. Keep those donations coming in. Yeah, I mean, I'm very grateful for him. Keep yes. on watching, like, subscribe, comment, share. Share this out now to your people. And we're getting a big man on the thing. Um, right now, he's just being talked through by our producer, Gary 
the man with the cam, Blake, he's got a plan as well, but he's got the cam with the plan. So as soon as um, that gets sorted, it's going to be short. It's not, not, not no time. You know what I mean? Bear with us, we're only 15 minutes and there ain't nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing at all. Yeah, but, well, listen, listen, I mean, I'm kind of holding back the questions I've got to ask this person, ask um, Mr. Breland, and I can see already online, people are itching to ask him questions. So it's just going to be a good one, but, you know, we, we, I don't know that. Who's next for Yard Tundi or who's, listen, this is the Mark Breland show. This ain't the, this ain't the Yard and Tundi show. This and is really, Mark really, yeah. If you want to ask those questions, send the donation in and maybe we'll answer them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Spence, as I said, I've been doing my research the whole day, the whole day, and um, just going over uh, Mark Breeden's career, and it's incredible. It's incredible what the man achieved. Um, and I'm, I'm just holding my tongue because I don't, I don't want to start talking. Because if I start talking, I'm really gonna yeah, start. Yeah. Reading of facts and figures, and uh, it's gonna spoil it. So, you know, listen, while we're waiting for Mr. Breeden, what's been happening in current boxing? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about, um, um, hold on, why am I, hold on, peace and love boxing. Boxing Rob's boxing fool says Mark Breeden is generally one of, if not the very best product of the American amateur system. And there you go. I'm telling you now, peace and love boxing, you are absolutely right. I don't want to get into too much, but if you think about what Mark Breland accomplished, Mark Hold Breland, it. Hold no, 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 what Mark Breland accomplished as an amateur yeah. was absolutely superb. We're going to touch on it more as soon as we get him on. You know what I mean? I've just sent a message to Gary, our producer, so we're going to find out on that. But yes, the guy. And um, what's Steve Bailey said? What's my thoughts on on yes. on AJ Fury being forty pound for pay per view? Mm. Worth every penny. I'm saying it now. Yeah, worth every penny. Of course, it's worth every penny. It's worth every penny. Well, that could be fair. Remember Reebok Rio Rose. <laughs> As they're still stinging Reebok Rails. That's a pair of Reebok Rails back in the day from, from white old clothes. <laughs> what, the white ones? <laughs> the white ones, yeah. With a gold shirt. I had them, you know. <laughs> 40 pounds is a lot of money, though, Spence. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Well, well, Tony, you say it. I want you to tell me the truth, bro. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> 40 pounds is a lot of money. I think. No. How, how much was. No, then again, how much was Floyd Pacquiao? Normal Barton, five pound, right? Check this one out. Normal Barton. We said, had a kind of tough week, gents. Already feeling yeah. lifted, looking forward to this all week. Thank Come you very much, Norman Barton. Norman Barton's a real one. Always out there defending man on, on Twitter. You know what I mean? We see you, Norman Barton. You're, you're real. You're real. You're a real guy. And when you're saying like, um, you're feeling lifted already. The mere fact that you said that has lifted me, and it's definitely lifted Tundi. <laughs> Come on, I, I don't even know if we can go any high. Oh, that's Sammy Ali. All, all of my mics on sport. We got you. We got you. I'm as impatient and looking forward to Mark Breeden finally sorting out these technical difficulties as as I as you are. So you just have to bear with us. It is not a um, four four nine one. <laughs> <laughs> With you know what? You, see the, you see the scamming thing, right? Yeah. The 491 thing. Yeah. Is massive now in Jamaica. Yeah. Massive. Well, you, in know, Jamaica. you know you Jamaicans are always following behind us. So you know it goes. No, it's not because of that. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to you why. And and it's not racism, it's realism. What happened was the Nigerian influx into Jamaica talking like from about 89. Should I get Mark Breland is in the house? Okay. <laughs> Elms, Elms, Tana, don't watch that. Don't watch that. I may be Nigerian, but I tell the truth. I'm one, I'm a, the good Nigerian, as you have the good Samaritan. That's who I am. 
<laughs> so yeah, the people we have delivered to you, myself and Spencer have delivered to you the first interview with Mr. Mark Breland and Spence, before I do the usual introductions. My well, black book too. That's what you gotta talk about. Black book, big up Spencer. You know he's done it again. The black book. Ladies and gentlemen, no, first of all, first of all, um Gary, play the tape. Please, Gary, please, Gary. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great honor and pleasure to bring to you the five-time Golden Glove champion, the two-time, two-time WBA Waterweight champion and the trainer of champions, the one and only Mr. Mark Breland. Well, uh, well, uh, Tundi, before you start, you also forgot the 1982 World Games gold medalist and the 1984 gold medalist at the so uh, sorry at the Los Angeles Los Angeles Olympics. Yes, sir. And the reason why that Olympics stood out so much is because that was the most standout Olympic team. That America has ever produced. Stop there. Mark Meldrick Taylor, gold medal. Pernell Whitaker, gold medal. Frank Tate, gold, gold medal. medal. Tyrell Biggs, gold, gold medal. medal. And the one and only Mr. Mark Breland, gold medal. Frank, oh no, Virgil Hill, Virgil Hill. Medal. And, uh, Evander Holyfield, bronze medal. medal. That's how great that team was. And um, Evander Holyfield's gold, Evander Holyfield's bronze should have been a gold. I remember he hit the carry after the bell and he got disqualified. That's why he got the still, he got the bronze medal. So, and remember at this at that time, 1984, Real Magazine Summer, Mark Breeding was on the front cover. Never been done by any amateur any time in the history of the Ring magazine that's been going since um, 1922, Mark Breland, you are a son. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. How you doing, Mr. Breland? I'm going to it's, it's absolute. It's an absolute honor and a pleasure. And I was telling uh, the, the fans before I come on, I feel like I was going on a date for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> because I was, I'm, I'm, I've got so much respect and admiration for you. Um, it's very, it's a very humbling moment for myself, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you, Spence. I leave it. I take. I leave it for you to take away. Right. Uh, Mr. Breeden, Mr. Breeden, have you got the sound on? Because I think I'm getting. We're getting a bit of feedback from from your. Somewhere we're getting feedback from somewhere. I don't know if that's me, Spencer. If that's you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can that's hear you. Okay. That's that's right. Right. Anyway, go ahead, Spence. Yeah, Mark. I'm <laughs> saying you, you've had such a fantastic career as a as an amateur. Like are you and where you came from was a little joke area. You know what I mean, Bedford Stuy, stand up, my friend. That was a you know, okay. Okay. like. What what does it mean to you the fact of how you transitioned yourself from being this beloved amateur star and you as a superstar even before you put on a pair of professional boxing gloves? Well, I mean, I, I um, 
well, coming up, coming up, coming up, I was watching Muhammad Ali all the time, and you know, just watching him made me want to box. And then it was like I just tried to copy copy what he was doing. So, like, when you first started, <laughs> off, and it was there was talk of of you turning pro. I know after you, you was approached um, after winning your second Golden Glove Championship when you was like 17 then to turn professional. Why did you turn it down? Was it your mindset solely on going to the Olympics? No, I was, I was focused on going to the Olympics. Yeah? I didn't want to turn pro then, no. You didn't want to turn pro? No, I was focused on more the Olympics. At that time, like when you, won, when you when you became like the five times Golden Glove champion, right? The person who held the record prior to that was a was a lightweight champion. It wasn't a bad fight. A guy called um, Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson. Yeah, he was he was one of my idols. He was my idol too. And you know, I want to break from that. Like, he's the thing of you know trying to break records and see who's who and you know, winning the gold when well, well, I won them five times, but winning them was just something that um, I just, it was just in me, just, wanted, just something I really wanted to do. And, and and I got a chance to meet Sugar Ray Robinson at the Olympics, when I went to the Olympics. And I, I didn't realize he was tall as he was. He was a big guy for Walter, back, even back then. Wow. Uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Breeden, obviously uh, we've already highlighted the fact that, you know, the 1984 team was such a star study team. In my opinion, you were the class of the whole squad. You were the standard of the whole squad. Tell me what it was like, you know, being in the same team with Biggs, Tate, Whitaker, Taylor, Holyfield, Hill. I mean, and you know what? Other notable gold medalists from the 84 Olympics, which we haven't mentioned, is Paul Gonzalez. Steve, Paul, uh, Steve McCrory, uh, Jerry Payne. You know, this was such a great thing. What was it like, like being around those guys? Well, it wasn't a lot of fun. Well, the weird thing was, they all basically looked up to me because in the amateur, you know, you know we all fought at, basically at the same time on different teams. And I pretty much, I was one of the not guys out. And so it was like, Everybody looked up to me. Okay. okay. Um, um, <coughs> Corey, um was Milton McCord's brother, right? What say that again? Steve McCord was Milton yeah. McCord's brother. Yes, the feedback is coming from you. Right. Have you got something on, Spence? Like your nah, is it have you, is you getting feedback? Yeah, that's better. That's better. Okay, okay. You know what was happening? My mobile phone was underneath the, the laptop. My apologies. Yeah. yeah. Steve, Steve McCory. Yeah, that's Milton McCory's brother. Milton McCory's brother. Because you ended up going to the Chrome Gym. Was it because of Steve why you ended up going to the Chrome Gym in the beginning? No, no. I I, um, I always watched Tommy Hearns. And that's why yeah. I wanted to go to Chrome Gym. And, and, you know, the weird thing, you know, boxing Tommy Hearns was weird because it was like, you know, we're doing the same thing. And one time we went to, well, I remember one time we was in Vegas sparring, and he hit me one time. And I, I, I had no clue where I was at at the time. And so right from there, I learned a lot. Yep, I saw, I saw that spar, you know, that spar that kind of you. <laughs> and like, but you, at the time there, you were an amateur, right? Yeah, I was, I was, I was 18 at the time. Okay. And with respect to Tommy Hearns, Tommy Hearns said, just walk it out. And you have to walk it out. And you started. But your style was very similar to Tommy because you would also waver your left hand, but you would go back with your bang the gloves and wait, wait at the fast hand. I mean, I was trying, I, I basically, I was trying to do the same thing that he was doing. And it kind of, you know, I figured it may throw him off if I'm doing the same thing. But that's what I was doing. I mean, that's, I learned a lot watching him box. Okay, because the Chrome Gym they had is like 
um, they they had some real serious guys in that gymnasium. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did, did you ever spar with Mike McCullough? Uh, I, think I, I think I sparred with him once. Okay. And and, and Mike Mike McCullough was a very tough guy, very slick, um, good puncher, very good puncher. Well, uh, let, let, let's, let's you know. Let's go ahead. Sorry. You no, know, Tom, Tommy, and um, Mike McCollum, They used to go at it all the time. Okay. Yes. yes, yes. I think when we, when we had when we had Mike McCallum on the show, he said he used to beat up Tommy every day. <laughs> um, Mr. Breeden, as an amateur, you know you amassed a record of 110 wins and only one defeat. And that sole defeat you avenge uh, as a professional against uh, Daryl uh, Anthony. Yes. What was it like going into that professional fight, knowing that this is the only man that put a blemish on your record as an amateur? My 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 whole thought was I gotta get him. I gotta get him. <laughs> you know, and uh, just you know, and coming out in that fight, you know, my, like I said, my whole mindset was like. Gotta beat this guy. I'm gonna stop him or whatever or decision. I just gotta beat him. That was my, that was my whole thought. You know, my own everything. Had, you know, there was nothing that could beat me at that time. I was gonna get him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Spence, <laughs> what was it? What was it like in the Los Angeles Olympics? Picking up that gold medal, knowing that you was gonna turn pro. Um, it felt good. I mean, it felt it was a great feeling. You know, my thing was, I mean, I, 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 I've always had a lot of confidence in what I, you know, in, in my style, what I did. And when I won, I just threw my hands up, and I was just happy, just happy to win. Okay, um, guys, are saying like the, the echoing on their side on YouTube. Um, Gary, send us some messages in, right? We'll we'll, we'll correct that. We'll fix that. My name is saying again. No, um, I'm speaking to my producer right now. He's saying like we're, we're getting echo, in, but you're perfectly fine. But he's saying that we're getting echo in on our side. Someone's saying that me and Tundi need headphones. Uh... Tun. Yeah, I've got headphones. If if that's what's needed. Yeah, I'll go get my headphones. One second. Okay, let me let me let me put in the headphones right now. I'll get my headphones. One second. Yes. Mark, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mark? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, before Spence comes back, I wanted to ask you, obviously, 23 years old, convention center, Atlantic City, you know, you, you, you're coming out to your first world title. I see, I see uh, Perna Whitaker, like with, uh, uh, Sweet Pea in the changing rooms with you, um, and walking out, you know, actually fulfilling a dream. You know, a rap age of rap, young age of twenty three. What was the feeling when you, when you lifted that title? Well, it felt great. I mean, me and me and Pernell have always been real tight, and you know, my whole thing was, you know, I got to win a champion. I won the Olympics. Now, now it's my champion. My my now it's my turn for a championship fight. So, and now you know everybody was supporting me. So, I, my you know, my whole thing was like. I can't, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I can't let you, I'm not gonna let nobody beat me that night. And, and let's, let's remember that, you know, you were the first gold medalist out of nine gold medalists to actually become a cha become champion first. So I mean, that must have really, you know, uh, really been a, a big thing for you, a big deal. Well, I mean, it was a big thing, you know, it was a lot of fun. But I know, you know, I, I, you know, I know Brunel was going to win the championship. I know a lot of most most guys on the team. I knew they'd become champions because it was a very good fight. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Spence? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, clearly. I can hear you clearly, my man. Right. Um, you guys let me know if it's still echoing. Am I echoing? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just checking out if uh, uh, you guys on the on the live just tell me if I'm still echoing. Um, yeah. I'm saying prior to winning your gold medal in the Olympics, um, you won the World Games gold medal at Welterweight. Right. Then you turned professional. Now, Tony wanted to know the deal that you signed with the Duvers, because I remember Tony was telling me earlier about he read something. What was the deal, Tundi? Can't hear you. I said it again. I'm oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Mark. I mean, I, I, I asked Spencer this question this afternoon because I read that the deal that you signed with the Duvers was apparently 100 or 150K for life. <laughs> so I'm like, to me, that sounds like a good deal. I just wanted you, I just wanted to know whether you could clear that up or not, if that was the kind of deal that was in place way back then. Mm. No, not really, no. But um, not far from it, not far from it. But I mean, it was a nice, it was a nice, it was a nice signing. Yeah. Uh, that, well, that's fair, fair. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we gotta be careful because the tax man, the IRS might be listening to us, so we gotta be careful. Yeah, so, yeah, um, so. Um, yeah, so yeah, but yeah, I mean, suffice to say, you know, you be, you, you know, you won the title, you lost the title, and then you regained the title. So, again, moving on to the second championships, what was that like? What was your feeling? You know, because these are the things where, as a, a spectator, as a fan, that I'm really interested to know the thoughts and the feelings of someone that goes to the top of the mountain, gets knocked off, then comes back and goes and, and wins and reclaims the, the belt again. Tell us your feelings, Mr. Breeden. Well, my thing, you know, my thing, I've always, my thing is, I've always wanted to win one title. That was my main thing. But then, I seen guys winning titles over and over again. I'm like, wow, I just thought you could win one title. And so when I seen guys going back to back doing it again, I said, okay, well, it's my chance to do it again. And you know, I was just gonna win as many championships as I can. Hello? Yep, I can hear you, Mark. I can hear you. Okay. Um, no. It sounds better now, so that's great. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Right. So, in, in 1986, September of 1986, Donald Curry is the undisputed world waterweight champion, and he fights a man from London, England, South London, off the Woolworth Road, right? Bermondsey Estate. Come on, come on. Lloyd, the ragamuffin man, Hannigan. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd, Lloyd Hannigan stops Donald Curry, where Donald Curry was on the <laughs> for the seventh round. And Donald, at that time, Lloyd Hannigan is now the undisputed world champion. At the time, there was only two undisputed champions in the whole world. There was three, but Michael Spinks, the year prior, moves up from light heavyweight to heavyweight to challenge Larry Holmes for his IBF crown, and he comes out successful. So there's two undisputed champions, Lloyd Hannigan being one and the other one being marvelous Marvin Hagler. Lloyd Hannigan then is meant to defend his WBA champ title against the world number one, Harold Volbich, who you end up fighting. Lloyd mm. he refuses to fight Harold because he's a South African. And he's not he refuses to fight him because of at the time the apartheid system was still running in South Africa. This is what Lloyd was saying. Now I'm not disrespecting Lloyd Hannigan, but what I am saying is I heard from very good sources that that was actually a lie. Lloyd Hannigan didn't fight Harold Volbridge because they didn't give him the money that he asked for. 
So he said, okay, then I'm going to relinquish the crown. So he relinquishes the title. And many people at the, at the time thought that Lloyd Hannigan was avoiding you. Because you... Me too. <laughs> I thought he was avoiding it. Right. Because, <laughs> because you were 6'2", some say you're six foot three. How, in fact, how tall are you, Mark? I might be six foot three. I'm not sure, but I'm, every time I turn around, I'm either six two or six three. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, but, but, okay. But in that front, Yes. You know, Lloyd came, you know, he came out. I mean, you know, he always had that, you know, I want to talk about that, you know, that, that heart off his shoulder, whatever you want to call it. But, um, you know, he was so, I mean, he was very cocky, very cocky guy. Mm. And so when I when I got in the ring, when I went stood in the center of the ring, I stared at him. He wouldn't look at him. He wouldn't look at me. I'm like, okay, I got you. <laughs> yes. I went right. right. And when I dropped him with a jab, I was like, wow, okay, I got you. Oh, so we're talking about we're talking about the Bobich fight. We're talking about the Honeygood fight, right? Yeah, I'm talking about prior to that, your first world title when you when you win the WBA title is because Lloyd Hunger relinquished the crown because he didn't want to fight, he refused to fight Volbridge because he said he's not going to fight a South African. Then, um, you fight Volbridge in in America five months later for the vacant crown. How elated was you to become a world champion then? Well, say it again. I'm sorry. How elated? How happy were you? How good were you when you Volbridge had became world champion? I felt good. I, you know, I felt good because my thing was I just wanted to win a championship. So now I know Lloyd's next. He's next in line because he he never wanted to fight me. I never. never to, no, he didn't want to fight me. Never. And, I, I, go ahead, sir. No. Sorry. And, when he came out talking that ragamuffin stuff, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm the like, I'm like a ragamuffin. <laughs> yeah, because, because let me just say, you were making your fourth defense of the title. You came over to Wembley, London, calm, humble. I remember at the weigh-in, I remember, I remember Spence, the fight was on BBC, right? Yeah, but we're confusing the history lines. So I don't want to no, 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 no. But, but the thing is, the thing is, but when he was away, I asked him how he felt. With regards to the world title, so he's kind of like okay. going over it. Okay. So that's okay. why, so that's why it All seems right. like it's mixed up. But let's just move to the Hunnigan fight, which was his fourth defense. Um, Wembley, England, London, and I remember at the weigh-in, you know, I think Mark, uh, Mark, you weighed in, or Mr. Breeden, you weighed in, I think half a pound under the limit. Um, and Lloyd was bang on uh, the water weight limit. And I remember you went to the center of the ring, as you said, you looked at his eye, and I remember Lloyd done this thing. <laughs> Lloyd, Lloyd went like, like that to you. Right. Like to say, yeah, it's on. And then you dropped him in the first round with a jab. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. You dropped him in the first round with a jab. You dropped him in the second round with a jab. <laughs> and then you dropped him three times in the third round waving off the fight and probably ending Lloyd Hannigan's career. I know Spencer to this day said to me, nah, that weren't Lloyd in there, that weren't Lloyd there. Well, it looked like Lloyd Hannigan to me. <laughs> now I have to defend Lloyd Hannigan. Lloyd Hannigan, oh no, Lloyd Hannigan, the day of the fight, just not taking away from Mark Breeden, because Mark Breeden is an exceptional champion. Lloyd Hannigan, yes. Lloyd Hannigan, the day of the fight, the morning, those days, they didn't have Remember, they changed the rules after, what was it, September 21st, um, 1991. The rules changed after um, Chris Eubank versus Michael Watson, where yes. you had to weigh in the day before the fight. On yes. those times, Mark and Lloyd will testify, when, when, when you came to the UK, you had to weigh in on the day of the fight. The morning of the fight, you had to weigh in, and then you'd fight yes. in. The, in the morning when Lloyd woke up and he went on the scales, he was half a soul overweight. This is factual. I'm not making up. He was half a soul overweight. So that's um, seven pounds overweight. 
So he had to go run and he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't make the way. That's not not taken away from Mark Breland, but I'm saying I reckon it would have been a better fight if it was Mark's got his hand up. Mark's got his hand up. No, Mark. No, Mark. <laughs> no, he needed an he needed an excuse. He needed yeah. Because he, he was scared of me. He didn't want to fight me. I understand they didn't want to fight you, but what I am feeling the Lloyd the Lloyd Hannigan that beat up um, the Lloyd the Lloyd Hannigan that beat up Johnny Bumpers. I love the Lloyd Hannigan that beat up Johnny that beat up Johnny Bumpers, um one of the new day, one of your stable mates, was was certainly not the Lloyd Hannigan that fought you. I'm not saying that you wouldn't have beaten him uh, back in the day. I think he would have given you a better fight than what he gave you that day. No, I can fight him on any day. I beat him with a jab. I beat him with a jab, baby. I beat him with a jab. <laughs> right. I remember. I remember. I remember. He came running out, and I hit him for him. He went down, and when he got up, he was like, he's looking around. I'm like, I'm right here. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember my uncle saying to me, he said, Spencer, did you see the lad on the gun fight? <laughs> what a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, okay, before we go, and let me just say, off the canvas boxing, thank you for the donation, sir. Yeah, loving, the gems, so loving the gem so far. Respect to Mark Breland on his career as a fighter and a trainer. Big up to Indy and Spencer. Keep up the sick content. Go ahead, Spence. Yeah. I'm I'm saying that that um that beating it was it was, it was horrible it was horrible because there's, there's it was it was a horrible beating you know the British fans were very disrespectful to Mark after he he, he stopped Lloyd no, because they were shouting what a load of rubbish what a load of rubbish they were wait 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 what a load of rubbish canvas <laughs> Come on, Mark. <laughs> Say that again, Mr. Breeder. Say that again. A load of rubbish was on the canvas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, the fight is right. Listen, if we had the original sound effects, I'll be giving you a trumpet, Mr. Breeder, because Mr. Breeder told us live on the fight is right. The load of rubbish was on the canvas. <laughs> Spencer. So, so Mr. Breeden, Spencer has been trying to defend Lloyd Anagan for the you last know, 10 Spence, years. Spence, you cannot defend him because you know why? Because he can't defend himself. <laughs> well, he, he couldn't defend himself from the because, because if you're going to take his place, then, well, then it's going to be me and you. Nah. You'd rather, you'd, rather, you'd rather me and you than me and him. Nah, you don't do that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got my side. Oh, good. Right? <laughs> yeah, listen, Mr. Breeden, we're loving it. And you know, listen, this has been the perfect setup because I'm going to be honest with you as I, as I always, always am with people because I just feel that honesty is the best uh, answer for everything. Some people don't like honesty, um, others do. But, you know, this has been all setting up to the relationship. Uh, you've had with uh, Deontay Wilder and the accusations. And I was just, I don't really listen or go on other people's forums that much. Uh, I like to keep my own opinions to myself, my own thoughts to myself. But I was watching some s some stuff yesterday and I'm I'm literally appalled at the, the treatment um, and the words that I'm hearing from American people with regards to you and uh, the whole so-called controversy surrounding uh, the Deontay Wilder fight. And I, I, I actually admire you for keeping your silence for so long, because if it was me, I would just be firing on all cylinders because that's how I'm built. But obviously you're an older man for myself and Spencer and, and uh, wisdom comes with age. And um, before we even touch on anything, before before we even touch on anything, I just like to commend you on the fact that you've held your silence and you've held yourself like a true champion thus far. 
Oh, I mean, I appreciate that, but you know, my own thing with, with Deontay, with Deontay, ah, that's a part of, that's a part of boxing, I guess. But, yes. Um, here's a guy just, uh, <coughs> you know, we'll see how, well, his career is done now, so I'm done, he's done. I'm done with him. Well, uh, I, I love it. Before we, before we ask you some questions on that matter, Matt McKenzie, uh, thank you for the donations again. He says, uh, the little fundamentals that Wilder does have, he hasn't been using in his last two fights, but more so relying on his power. What's up with that, Mark? Uh, what do you think about that, Mark? You know, uh, um, Matt McKenzie says that Deontay's been relying too much on his power in the last two fights and not really dealing with the fundamentals. What do you have to say about that? Well, one thing I, you know, I like to say is that, you know, okay, he's got a lot of power, that's all. And I wish him well, and that's it. Serious, serious. I only got his power. We'll see how far that takes him. Mm. You know, that's, all, that's, all, that's all I want to say. Yes. Right, right. But one thing um, um, for you, sir, is I have to commend you just as what Tundi has said. It's like, what was it? Michelle Obama says, when they go low, we go high. And the mere fact that you've done that, then I've got to props that. And not only that, because if that's me, and I know what America's like, I know there's going to be legal procedures going on. We don't have to elaborate on that. But the mere fact that you've kept your class and your dignity to things that are ludicrous, right? So therefore, I can't, I've, I've said this way before, I said it last year, um, when um, allegedly there was meant to, you were meant to be dismissed from, from working, and then it came out later, they were united, so they, it was me that first said that. Well, I, I've heard from people around that you're gonna be dismissed from your role. I yes. said it's graceful that it was, because I'm not speaking ill of Jay Diaz, but I know Jay Diaz, didn't go to Olympics. I know Jay Diaz didn't win a gold medal. I know Jay Diaz hasn't hasn't um, fought for the World Amateur Games Championships and won a gold medal. I know Jay Diaz doesn't even turn pro. <laughs> Come so, on. This is what I'm trying to say. What I've noticed about how this game is, it's like when you're around something, these are my words and not my brilliance. When you're around something, especially when you're coming from uh, um, them, them chips and uh, was it? Were they uh, in Alabama grits? <laughs> <laughs> right. Where you're from? Where you're from? When you're from those areas, and somebody was to amass the kind of wealth that Deontay Wilder has amassed, what happens is this: is that you get surrounded by yes men because guys don't want to go out and hustle for themselves, so they latch on to the next best thing. So this is my opinion. Got nothing to do with my brilliance. So what I'm saying for the thing over that, when you get that, when I'm telling you, know, because we're from the road, right? <laughs> Come on. When, when, you, when you get that, you're going to get a world in these brothers whispering in your ear. So when everybody's whispering in your ear, certain people don't want to admit blame or to take blame on themselves. <laughs> excuse. Famously, famously, like when George Foreman lost to Ali October, 1964 in Zaire, he made every excuse going. My shoes were too big, they were too tight, the gloves didn't fit right. <laughs> this is George Foreman. So he says, When you do this, but it's the manner of how you take defeat and how you come back. Hence, why I have to commend you because when you lost your title against Marlon Stalin, and then you had the, the, the debatable draw in, in, the, in the rematch. How you brush yourself off, and then what's it now? 89 so that 32 years, 32 years ago, this month, you became a two-time world champion when you beat Song Shil uh, um, Lee uh, in that was it? I swear it's like it's really quick, 86 seconds on the undercard of Lloyd Hannigan, Marlon Starling. It's 32 years ago. That's the uh, Mr. Breeden, Mr. Breeden, uh, obviously I understand, you know, you know, you're a man of integrity and um and, and, and honor. 
And, and you know, as I said, we'll have to salute this. But if we ask any questions that you're not comfortable with, just say, you know, uh, you know, just 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 deal with it the way you would deal with it. But you know, this is a live interactive show, and 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 you know, I I and Spencer wanted to highlight your career uh, before we really get down into the questions which everybody wants to hear, and they want to hear you. And I feel that we're giving you this platform where, uh, and especially when the Americans seem, I, I just, some of the stuff I'm hearing um, from the American press and fans is 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 really out of this world. Um, what can you say about, do you think there's going to be a, a, a Wilder v Fury free? Honestly, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, listen, Spence. If it Mr. Happens, no problem. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, I mean, have you got anything to say against these allegations of you spiking waters and stuff like that? Well, like, you know, because uh, I, I, for me, I know even if you're, you you don't care about the map, it, it's still defamatory to your image. And, you know, the reason why we've given this platform is so that the people hear you. I, I want to hear you. I want to. I know you don't care about, because I'm the same. I wouldn't care about Wilder, but I would defend myself, you know. And I feel that, I feel that, you know, you should defend yourself, you know, and what you feel about this man saying that he spiked your war. I mean, I mean, so many people know me. My, my character speaks for itself. A lot of people know me. Yes. Spike and if you look at if you if, if you're looking at the tapes or whatever and stuff like that, you don't you'll never see the water in my hand, basically. You, you know, somebody else will give me water. And regardless of that, I'm not you know, I'm not there to, I'm, I'm there to help you not, you know, with your earth. And let the people know how long have you been working with Deontay Wilder? My attitude is when you win, I win. Yes, yes. It's about that's the bottom line. When you win, I do. And you know, listen. I mean, again, I'm saying, uh, 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 easy, um, uh, uh, easy band says JD's had the water. You never had the water. JD's had the water. So, again, that's even ludicrous to say such a, such a thing. Well, you, uh, got people, you got people. I've seen some foolish people talk to me about talking to me about that it's fight. Four you know, come on now. You know, if I'm fooling, I mean, only fools people come with stuff like that because it's crazy. Because you know me, you know me. So, so uh, tell me, um, um, how long was you working with uh, Deontay? Say that again, I'm sorry. How long have you been working with Deontay, or was you working with Deontay prior to the last fight? The last night, you know. How many? No, but I, I mean, how many years? I was with him since he turned pro. Wow. And, wow. You know, and nothing happened except you know, and that's the only thing that happened after that. Once, once, see, some people can't take a loss. Yes. yes. You do what you do. You know, it's a part. It's a part. You know yourself. Yes. Now, when you know, don't blame everybody. Okay? Look at it, look at it, you know, go back and think about it yourself. Yes. yes. And there was and a, there was a, a let me pick up Ray 71 who's made a donation of 15 pounds. Thank you very much, Rains. Really big appreciate up, big it. Up, big up, up Rains. Um, well, what do you think about um this whole situation with um Tyson Fury cheating with his gloves? Did you see that at any point? If you if you did, I mean, which I, which I doubt it very much. I don't I don't know. I, you know I've never seen that, but still at the same time, he's not gonna be Tyson Fury. That's what I love to hear. That's what and, the fans want to hear. And, 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 and you, you know, 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 J D's was standing right there when the man was in his hand, right? Now if you put something in there, either Jay's blind or something out there. You know how strict it is in America. Ton, I've had fighters fight out there. You've had fighters fight out there, yes. right? And when your hands are being wrapped, right? Everybody, 
Everybody. Yeah, everybody's there. State commission's there. So you're saying the state commission was in with it as well? Are you saying that J. Diaz, the guy who's really from the amateur days, he was in it as well? Because something like that, you can't you can't hide that away from the guys. No. Right? Unless you unless the proper field. I mean, James, you know, James right there when he gave his hand, right? You know, and he, couldn't, he didn't say nothing. Mark, I mean, I would, and no, and let me tell you, like I said, to be honest, that's how much he knows about boxing. Hell, he probably still put a telephone there. Come on, come on. Because, Mr. Breeden, I remember. I remember um, I, I was in the corner with um, Derek Chisora against Vitali Klitschko in Germany. And they sent me to Vitali's room to watch his hands being taped and wrapped. When Fury fought um, um, Deontay, who was the person that was sent to watch the wrapping of the hands? They did. Yes. JD. Wow. Wow. So really, it's JD that's supposed to be getting the blame, not you. <laughs> that's the way I see it anyway. Spence? No, I'm like, I'm just saying, I don't want to I don't want to fester too long on this this love gate thing or yes. any allegation. The reason why is because me uh, or us focusing on that too long. We've got the soundbite Mark said. None of that foolishness that went around him. Uh, he never had no loot around him. That's enough. You don't need to talk no more. And the reason why you don't need to talk no more is because we're, we're diminishing the fact that we are speaking to a two-time world champion. We're speaking to a man that was an Olympic Games gold medalist. We're speaking to a man that was a world game gold medalist. We're speaking to a man that was a five, I say five times Golden Gloves champion. Yes. Yep. yes. Are we looking? Yes. Are we looking at guys in his in his spare room? Look, he's got all the things all laid out for us and all the rest of it. His gold medals up there um, to the right of him. I'm sure that's your gold medal, right? From from the last right? Yeah. But right. Right. Oh, my thing is, you know, I mean, like you said, in every fight is in the corner man to the other guys. I mean, you know, the guys in the corner to the other guys, the room, the watch hands. I guess that's why they took Jay to watch his hand. That was it. That was you it. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Hundred percent. Okay, well, so of your, um, all right, of your decision from from working with um, Deontay Wilder, was it a mutual agreement, or did you just get a letter through the post? How did it go? What you train? What training? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, we had. Talked about that years ago, and, and I started working with him. Other than that, then you know things it was all things were okay until we got beat. Yes, yes. Um, can I just say, Mr. Breeden, you have tr a tremendous amount of support here in the UK. Um, so much people are backing you. So much people are with you. You know. Um, G Chase said he just wants to big up Mr. Breland. He says that you are a certified brother. None of us believe a word of what Wilder accused or said about you, sir. Mm -hmm. And so, somebody's actually paid to say that, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Breland. Yeah, big up G. Big up G. Big up G. So you know you're 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 very well respected over here, and you've got a lot of fans over here who are really disgusted with um, how you've been treated. But again, credit to you for the way you've dealt with this whole situation, sir. Uh, but again, I just want to reiterate what um, Spencer has said. We're not here to discuss the negatives. Even though the, 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 the fans, the boxing fans, they want to hear, you know, they want to hear the, 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 the nuts and guts, the bloods, the blood and what have you. But I think that as Spencer said, you've answered it. You know, you've asked the questions uh, honorably. So, 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 Spence, Ali, you know, that's I've, that's what I've got to say. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to say to Mark. Mark, Mark, where, where did you learn to throw your jab in the way that you threw, you threw your jab? Who taught you that? Say that again? Where did you learn to throw your jab in the way that you threw your jab? Because your jab was like a right hand. 
Well, it was a combination, to be honest, a combination between Muhammad Ali and Tommy Hearn. Because that guy was true. I mean, because Tommy Hearn had a nice stiff jab. Muhammad Ali was stuck with a hard jab. Yeah. And the combination of that, it thought it both at the same time. Yeah, but not only that, but you throw the combination to find a jab. But how you threw your uppercut, Ali didn't throw an uppercut like that. Tommy Hearns never threw an uppercut like that. How did you get to throw? Because for a tall guy, this is what I realized about you, which a lot of guys, which a lot of guys don't do, you would throw the jab right uppercut. You could throw that right uppercut when he was up close. For a tall guy, loads of guys can't throw inside work, but you had a very, very good inside game. Um, I mean, you know, I box a lot of short, I used to box a lot of short guys. And then I got him to drop down and come up with the uppercut. It works pretty good. You can't hear you, Tom. I went back to another question with regards to um, uh, the Fury and AJ fight. Um, someone that says, he said, said Tundi and Spence, don't let Mark leave without telling us exactly how he thinks AJ and Fury goes. Uh, and if he really thinks Fury is a special as they say, or Wilder's just a man with no boxing fundamentals. Well, I, I can say um, Mr. Breen has already said he doesn't think um, uh, Deontay can win that fight. But how special is Tyson Fury, Mark, in your opinion? I mean, he's a, he, one thing, he's a very good boxer. But he's, he's good at mind games. You know, he, he's good at you know, talking, talking, talk a good, he talk a good game. And yes. frustrate people or not. I mean, he can get you frustrated just by talking. If you're not yes. yes. Do you think that will work with uh, Anthony Joshua? And how do you see that fight going? To be honest, I could be there for Joshua. <laughs> Set, repeat that again. See, please, one more time. I could be there for Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that what so Mr. Freedom? Listen, so you I'm, believe I'm being straight, straight out. Here's a guy who doesn't have a jab at all. And, and yeah, when he fought Maurice, I think the second fight, he took yes. like his jab, that wasn't a jab, he was just doing this. Now to fight a guy like him, I would out, first of all, I would out jab him. I would out jab him. He couldn't, he, I don't think he'd be able to touch me. Mm. And I think, and mm. I, 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 I put him to sleep, because the jab, he has no jab. And the jab, you bring it back here, and put you down. So you don't, so you don't that, feel that um, power would necessarily play a role in this fight with AJ against Fury? No, Fury would beat him. Fury would beat him up. Oh wow! Why do you think Fury? Why do you think Fury would beat up? Um, and he, he, has, he has a good mind game. He plays with these guys. He's playing their head, and guys they get mad or they just get frustrated. Or they want to get so frustrated when they're trying to when they throw them off their game. Um, I'm just. I mean, I'm just talking from a um, a fan's perspective and a trainer's perspective. One thing I've noticed about the Americans, Mark, and I'm not saying that you're contributing to this, but I do feel that the American boxing public do not give AJ the respect that he deserves. And I think that... Time out, time out. I'm not, I'm not on that. I'm, not, I'm on my side. Yes. I'm a fighter. Yes, yes. And... Uh, you know, I watch boxing, I watch fighters, and from my eyes, from, from what I see, yes, I could be him. <laughs> what, I'm talking about what, now. Well, not today, yes. but, but I could be him. Wow, he, wow. He has, uh, no, he has no, he's just, just straightforward. He, he's not hard to hit. When we hit him, he's not hard to hit. Mm. Don't you think that fight was maybe down to a bit of lack of 
complacency on AJ's part and the fact that they didn't really prepare for a short fighter. They were getting ready to box. Um, what's this drug street cheat's name? Um, what's his name, Spence? The man who's, who's taking drugs all the time. What's his name? Um, what's his name, Spence? Come on, Jamel Puddy Bear. Jamel, yeah. And then the change in opponent at the last time. You know, okay. I remember. What do you but think at, about that? But at the same time, you know, when when I'm training for a fight, if I'm training, if I'm training for, if I'm training to fight Mike Tyson. And I'm gonna get somebody in spar who fights pretty much basically like Mike Tyson. But but that's the point I'm making. That there was a change in opponent. Really, I think it was two weeks or something. So he didn't really have time to change. Uh, you know, at that point. It was oh, so, opponent, no. so if you don't know boxing, don't box. <laughs> if, you gotta, if I got a fighter, if I if I'm gonna fight somebody, yes, I watch, so I watch all their tapes. Now they come out doing something totally different. Yes. Okay, I can change your picture. I'm okay. Who's okay. got a question? I know you twenty pounds. No, no, no. Wait. Before that, Spence. Sorry. Matt McKenzie asks, Mark, who's your top five boxers today? Today? No, of all time. Of all time. My former four. Muhammad Ali. Yes, one. Tommy Hearn. Three. Two. Ray Leonard. Four. I'm afraid of the Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, moving forward. Can you tell people just how good Rufio Benitez was? Because a lot of people don't know just how good uh, Rufio Benitez was. And I was having a yeah. dialogue just the other day saying, like, how how radar was. He was the best defensive fighter ever. Wow. Wow. If, wow. You, watch that, if you watch that fight with him and Tommy Hearns. Tommy Hearns got a glove on him. Tommy Hearns hit him. And he got him on the ropes. And then see, Tommy threw a combination. I mean, he, he slipped every punch from the ground and he got Tommy like this. He walked away. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, but you know, you don't you don't see fights like that no more and you don't see defense, you don't see defense. The, only, the closest guy to his defense was Penel. Wow. So, so we're not so we're not we're not giving we're not giving Floyd Mayor with no ratings. <laughs> you see that Spence? Mark went like that. He went like that. No ratings for play. All right, I mean, Mr. Um, <laughs> go on. Say what you're going to say, Mark. Don't get me wrong. You know, you know the shoulder roll and all that stuff. You point in your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. I don't know why no one ever thought of that, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, you're putting it out there. By the fourth round, you'd be, be hanging. What kind of like... Like George Benham famously was the guy that that brought the shoulder roll up, and I know like George was working with um, Lou Duva. Oh, George Benham. Yeah, but I never ever saw George Benham in a world title fight working with you. There's another brother I don't know. I know I know the gentleman who used to work in your corner, but I never saw George Benham work with you. Did you ever do any work with George? No, I'm not. Um, I'm just in the gym. But George Benham, he was a, he was a great trainer. I mean, he's very slick. He's very slick. I mean. Look what he did to Fennell. <laughs> yeah. Fennell were doing things up there because we came up with the amateurs together. Fennell were doing things I've never seen before. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and Drew better than him. Interesting. And, um, and, and, and one thing, the only thing with Fennell, he wouldn't spar with me back. He would never spar with me. I mean, come on. If I fought, if I had a, if I was fighting the Southpaw, we was in the amateurs together. I mean, you know, I got a guy fighting the Southpaw. I said, um, I want to see if you know, can, you know, if I can hit one. He said, well, when, when you fight, you'll see. I said, I want to spar with you. I mean, you know, see if it happen. You're not going to hit me. I said, how do you know? He said, because I'm not going to get an energy. I'm not going to box. He would never box me. You know what? He said that in a, he said that in an interview. When, when Pernod Whitaker moved up to fight Buddy McGirt, was that 92, I think, 93? When he moved up to fight Buddy McGirt, 
And Perno Whitaker said, yeah, I want to fight the waterweights, but I will never fight Mark Breland. He punched too hard. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm, I'm my buddy, I'm my buddy. Yeah, God <laughs> Anyway, what's the guy's name? <coughs> um, Sticky, yeah? Sticky, yes. It says, big up, Breland. There is a fight that you hadn't fought in your career that you would have wanted to, to test your skills against, maybe past or present. Who's the guy that you want to fight? Also, big up, stamina for sale. Cream. <laughs> oh, well, you're going to it for cream now. Yeah, well, it's well, really shiny. So, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so, Mark, um, is there a fight, a past or present, that you would wanted to have tested your skills against but never had the opportunity to do so? Floyd. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy fights. Floyd Mayweather against Mark Breland. So break down that fight for us, Mark. How would you have dealt with that fight? Ooh. A lot of jabs. A lot of punching to the shoulder. You know, and then, you know, you're doing this and you're turning. Oh, I'm punching your shoulder. I'm punching your shoulder. I'm going to turn. I'm going to hit you in the back. I'm going to hit you in Whatever you give me, I'm going to hit you. But I don't think... I mean, he's, he's a good fighter, buddy. He's not that big of a puncher. Isn't that because he went up in weights, though, as a super featherweight and even a lightweight? He, he was quite devastating. I know definitely that super feather. But, you know, he went up against naturally bigger guys. And maybe that's when uh, he, he he opted more for the boxing as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, taking these guys out. I mean, he's good. I mean, he's good at what he does. Okay. Yes. I would have liked to see well I, the fight I would love to see was him with Pernell. Yes, yes. Well we heard of a, we heard of a story, uh Floyd said that when he was younger he boxed Pernell and he said he knew right then he was a superstar. Did, was you ever uh, witness to any of the, these spars that Floyd and Sweet Pea had? No, I thought they may. Uh, I heard something, but I'm not sure. Yes, yes. Spence, right. So we're looking at on the. Oh, sorry. Who's that now? Michael. Michael Burford. Was it difficult for Wilder? Did he listen to you? Good question. Mark Burford. He said, was it difficult training Wilder and did he listen to you? The proof is in the fights. You look at the fights. If you look at any of my fights, amateur or pro, you'll see nothing like you. Nothing. Because he does what he wanted to do. Okay. Uh, so he didn't listen to you? No. Basically. Wow. Wow. So why, I mean, why, why, why keep that relationship going so long? You know, is it because just the love you had for this guy and you always wanted the best for him? I mean, yeah. it seems... You know, I, thought, I thought, you know, that, you know, he could do better than what he would, than what he, and what he was, oh, I, I have it, I have it. Let me start off. Let me start. First of all, if I box the guys he boxed, I'd beat them. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is serious. It's serious. That's the bottom line thing. So do you think that so do you think that Wilder's career was carefully matched? Because obviously you didn't you didn't do the matchmaking, right? Couldn't match nothing, couldn't match nothing too carefully, just like but I mean, he 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 he, he had some good wins against uh you know uh Luis Ortiz. I thought that was a good uh okay. Uh, well, good you, said, you, said, you said he had some good wins. Yes. A good win. A good. <laughs> okay. So so do you agree with me that the Ortiz was a just good win? That, just that fight. That was it. Okay. 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 I'm gonna correct you. I thought I thought actually. The first remains to Vern fight, I thought he boxed very well in that fight. I thought he kind of was listening to you in there. 
You had the elongated jab, apple, then he bought. He bought. You can be Stefan. Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Breland, Lady Shan, and let me say, Lady Shan is a female. Uh, she's a boxing. She's 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 a boxing uh, journalist and also a, a a big musician in a, a thing we called Gram out here. She actually did a song, uh, you know, in your defense, you know, slating uh, Wilder and saying that you should never have sat. Uh, Mark Breland. So Lady Shan is actually. Tell her, she's tell actually. Her. Tell her what? Tell her, yeah. You hear that, Lady Shan? The great Mark Breland is saying, great. But Lady Shan said, why did it take Wilder nine months to fire you if it was about throwing in the towel? And how doesn't AJ have a jab? Does Wilder have a jab? No. Oh, no. wow. If and he used the jab one time and that fight with Stefan. And that was it. You think you know his whole his whole his whole thing is his motto is you gotta be perfect for 12 rounds. Yes. Like, like that. Mm. So 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 basically that's why and also a, a, another question I wanted to ask you. Is it true? That Deontay Wilder doesn't really hit the heavy bag and the speed bag and opts more for the traditional training of strength and conditioning. Is that true? That's not traditional. No, um, he hits the. No, he box. He never hit the he... bag. He don't hit the bag. He don't hit. You don't have speed bags, right? Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, Very what, interesting. What, what I'm trying to say, Mark, could it be like, even though. Um, first of all, he don't jump rope. He don't he jump don't rope. Speed bags. He don't listen. Wow. Are you listening to that? The fight is right, listeners. Deontay Wilder does not hit a heavy bag. He does not hit the speed bags. He does SNC, strength and conditioning. And, uh, Mark, what do you think? I mean, what, what's your take on that? You know, with with all this new age training, do you think that it's one of the reasons why we we don't see the the craft and the art of boxing anymore? Oh no, you don't see that. I mean, you know, I mean, boxing has changed so much now to where you know, it's pads and body. You know, <laughs> and the man I mean, doing all the work. <laughs> He's doing this. Hoping no one hoping, hoping he don't get it hit. He's hoping he don't get it. He's hoping he don't get it. But you know, my thing is, you know, you know if, you see, if you see some of these guys too bad, you just crack up. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Uh, listen, uh, Matt McKenzie, um, he said Mayweather uh, is the best defensive fighter of all time. Plus, AJ has a way better jab than Wilder. It's obvious you don't like them. Stop the madness, Mark. Uh, love from Brooklyn. <laughs> so this guy is saying that Floyd is the best def defensive fighter of all time. What do you think about that? I mean, that's his opinion. Everybody, his opinion, you know what an opinion is like, right? Yes, sir. Everybody got yes. it. Everybody but my, got it. But my thing is, Pernell would not, Pernell would be Floyd. I don't care what nobody said. No. <laughs> hands down. Wow. 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 wow, interesting. Yeah. So do you do you agree also that AJ has a better jab than Wilder? No. No? No. He don't have oh. So you cut out there, Mark. But you know, 
everybody got opinions, right? Yes, yes, yes. But I'm talking from experience. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, come on. Come on. You know, but, but, ah. but my thing is, you know, you got, you know, fighters like Pernell, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, Floyd, Floyd, Floyd's an excellent fighter. But at, yes. the same time, but at the same time, if you look at boxing coming up, if I can pick who I want to pick, yeah, I'll be, be undefeated too. If I can pick all my fights, if I can pick all my opponents, yeah, I'll be undefeated too. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, he had, he had to. <coughs> yes. You can do that. That's you know, a very, very. You know how many champions there'll be if you can have picture fights? That's a, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Regardless, regardless, we still can't take away Floyd Mayweather's accomplishments um, being a multiple weight world champion. No, no, yes. no. No, no, no. He's good at what he does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you can pick your opponents, you're good at what you do. That's 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 a good point as well, Spence. That's a good point. When you could when you could pick your opponents, you know that that's a very good point. I'm not going to disagree with you, although again, you know, the, the the numbers don't lie, and what Floyd has done is remarkable. It, it, it's incredible, to be honest with you. And I think you have to give Floyd respect because he's taught fighters uh, the business of boxing outside of the ring. So He's don't you give them, give them credit for that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, Alan Skill says, Mark, you are an absolute legend. Love and support from the UK. Uh, we know you are a good and low man. You're a legend. Yes, sir. Big I'll do it <laughs> See, no, I'm well, not mad at you. I, I love watching the fight. It was a great fight. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad at you at that time because I'm saying like, I know Hannigan did what he had to do right. when he beat Donald Curry and caused one of the biggest upsets in world boxing history. So I'm not. I'm not mad at you for beating him up because, like. I'm gonna lie. I really wanted you to smash Marlon Stalin in the in the rematch. I wanted to. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, I did. I really wanted to smash him. Um, but it, not only that, but it was like I hated people that always moaned about ah, oh, this is always going wrong for me. I'm always gonna get wrong. Blah 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 blah. And it seemed like even though I, I've spoken to Marlon, I saw Marlon Stalin around that in Vegas. Yeah, I mean, pretty nice guy, but I mean, sorry, Starling, when I was out in Vegas, pretty nice guy, but I really liked um, um, you because I remember there was so much hype and I'm only a young man in 84. I'm 10 years old. So me getting a ring magazine and seeing you front page of ring magazine and no amateur fighter has ever done that to grace the cover of a ring magazine. I was saying that's, you got to be something special. I remember the movie that you're in, the Laws of the Laws of Discipline. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that movie? That was filmed in England too. I know at Pinewood Studios. Yeah. And that film, that film was before you even went to the Olympics. Yeah. This is how big the guy was, you know. <laughs> uh, Mr. Breland, um, Rav eighty six says, where do you think Wilder's career goes now, and is he still? In the top five. Also, would you consider training any of the current heavyweights? If so, question, if, you know, so if so, if so, I don't want to talk about Evander no more. And I want to say thank you to Tunde. Tunde, Tunde, yes. And Spencer. Well, listen. Both of you. We appreciate having you and sharing your time with us, Mr. Breeden. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure. Right. Lastly, if you had any, if you had anything to say to any young fighter coming up uh, of encouragement, what would you say to him, Mark Breeden, before you sign out? If you're a nice trainer, someone who knows what they're doing, and work hard, run. 
You just work hard, stay in the gym, stay out of trouble. My dear, it's been a total honor, my friend. Thank you so much for giving us this interview. Thank you so much for showing us your love. Um, you know I mean, big up to you. Uh, thank you. And thank you very much for giving me that comment. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, Spence. <laughs> Mac, Mac tried to get in there with, with, a, with a last one. Right. <laughs> Mac was like, Mac, again, big up because you're a true supporter. You're always supporting the team. Thank you but, so much. But, but, but Mac said, but Mac said, he's a true supporter. But Mac said, but Mark, he headed out before you got there, Mark. He said, Mark, why were you so unsuccessful at teaching Wilder a proper job? Well, I'll answer that for Mark. I, I will answer because he did actually answer it, uh, Mac. He said the guy don't listen. <laughs> the guy don't listen, fam. If, if you if you're training someone and they're not listening, but then that listen, I was rude. I was like, okay, so if he's not listening to you, why would you want to keep a relationship going for so long for 12 years? You know, and he, he didn't really answer that question, but because, believe me. Because he didn't have to pay his partner draw no more. <laughs> <laughs> but believe me, I think that we as boxing fans have to be honored that the man shared 90 minutes with us yeah the first ever yep. interview that he's given since uh the, the, the unfair in my opinion dismissal of, of of himself and it really takes a lot for a humble because he's a humble man spent very humble man not in the not in the mix yeah. up that she said and all the rest of it so we have to prop him for that and he did give a, a, a fantastic interview. Yes, yeah. And and you see, bro, bro, we made him stand up and start shadow boxing. <laughs> to chat about that top man in the shoulder. <laughs> so that was, listen, man, uh, again, it was an honor for me to have this man on, on, our, sh on our show. But it's very interesting, some of the things what he was saying about, about Wilder and um, how he said his career's done. And he also said he can he cannot beat Tyson Fury. Yeah. But I didn't just out of respect, I didn't want to really go in on him on the AJ thing because I still yeah. think I still think that Americans for some reason they're just not giving AJ no respect. And I don't know why that I'm still trying to work it out. I know, I know why it is, but I ain't gonna get into it for this show. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, I know where it is, um, and and we know. Mm. I don't, I'm, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. It is what it is. Yeah, you know I mean, it is what it is. The game is what it is. And like I said, I was grateful for everybody for tuning in. <coughs> um, what's it? What's that? Mark Thomas again? Mac Thomas? No, it's not Mac Thomas. It, Mac, it, Mac McKenzie. Yeah, Mac McKenzie. Yeah, Mac McKenzie. Sorry, there's another guy called Thomas who just said the question. I'm like, come on. Yeah. The hot seat. Got hot at the end for him. That's why I said <laughs> No, I don't even think it's that. You know, listen, again, uh, I'm not too sure Mark Breeden's exact age, but that was a serious interview because you know what you know me, bro. What, 57 years old, bro. 57 years old. And he, you know, this man, he had a hard career, bro. And 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 you know me, once I started letting off certain questions, you know, <laughs> the temperature started to rise, bro. Man. Listen, I, I, I'm just thankful for what we did get out of him. Uh, he, yeah. he was he, he was quite vocal and he did say things, you know. Because remember, before I really pressed the matter, he was like, I don't have nothing to say. I, you know, uh, he can do what he wants and I'm going to do what I want to do. But then we started to open up the thing because, you know, we're from the roads. <laughs> So we just opened him up. We opened him up like a, a can of sardines and he started to talk, which was really good for us. And um, I think we couldn't have asked for much more than what we no, got from, no, from him. And also, I've got to say, like, prior to it, because I'm just keeping it 100, uh, the person who allowed us to get the interview was actually his lawyer. You know what I mean? And, yes. And so she went through things, but when she... When we spoke, she felt assured that we weren't going to try no smart trickiness. Y yes, yes. You know, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to be smug. I had the hundred and one questions. It was that on the case there, but I didn't want to pay him any disrespect. I said I wanted to talk about his career. I'm glad that we did. I'm sorry that I had to go get my headphones at the time. So, yes. 
I mean, I was repeating certain things like what Tundi already asked. So my yes. apologies. But you know what? It's like I said, the show's just getting better. And name anyone. I'm telling you this now. Sky Sports can't get that. Talk Sport can't get that. We've gone through the Holies. BT can't get that. We got that. We got that. We got that. Because it's the rules. Right. Of course it's the rules. Because we're from the roads. Right? And I know. <laughs> Come on. Right? It's and the rules. What's that? Reese James has said, uh, Lions Den Boxing Community have got some new content for the next few weeks. And that is the absolute truth. But you know what? Um... I'm not going back and forth because people were sitting there and trying to say that I was a, a Deontay Wilder hater. I would no. go, I would listen, I'll go up against anyone in the LDBC, <coughs> right? Because the, the boxing boxing blue blood or Martha Stubbs says blue blood to twist to twist the content, yeah. To twist all oh, yeah, blue blood to twist a lot to of twist words. a lot of words. Okay. Now, listen, listen, Martha, blue blood, no people say twist. Blue is actually my friend, you know, he's my guy. He didn't talk to me. He's got a lot of respect for me and vice versa. And so I don't business about anyone trying to twist anything or blah, 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 or all the rest of it. I'm just saying, we just got to go out and do our thing. Yeah. Peace, love, and boxing. Right. Tun is amazingly diplomatic in his questioning. And he had to be. Because, and you know what? Guys, Vince. Because, you know what I mean, they told us, they told us uh, on the things that we should touch on, but and I reiterated it to Tundi, but Tundi don't business. <laughs> no, because but, but he was diplomatic in answering. Yeah, I don't know who I, I, I actually don't call it diplomacy. I, I just call it being respectful. Yeah. It's how I mean, Anthony Yard is always saying to me, Unks, I know you've got a good heart, but it's the way you say things to people. And you know what? Anthony's a younger man for me, and he's taught me a lot. And, I, and, and and that's part of how I, how I was questioning. I was questioning with respect, but still giving the, the, the uh, or, or asking the questions that the people wanted to hear. Yeah. And, and, and that, that, he's a great man. I don't care what anyone tells me. He's, he's a great, great man. man. You know, right. Room 71, room 71, please get Marvin Hagler on the show. Aha, uh -huh. that's one. That's one we gotta get. We gotta get Marvin Hagler. I know Marvin Hagler. Don't he's number four, you know? Come on, who's number? Haven't you got on your phone? That's yeah, what cool. I want to know. Uh, <laughs> what I'm gonna be real with you, Ren. You know what I mean, my old buddy from back in the day. How it goes with Marvin Hagler? He's um, how is it? He's very reclusive to doing interviews. Very reclusive to that's how he rolls, and he's very dead straight laced. Like you, who if he's if you go to Marvin Hagler, say, yeah, we only want you for twenty minutes, right? At, at 19 minutes, 30 seconds, he's looking to head out. That's how he is. So, you know, yes. but I, um, it's true. So on one day, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to holler Marvin Hagler. You, know? you never know. I'm going to holler. Come on. Come come on. on. Anyway, oh. I, I know you're the done anyway. I know you're the yeah. done anyway. I know that Black Book's powerful. So it ain't going to be no shot to me. Even Listen, the fact that we've managed to get Mark Breland, I, I saw someone said this is supposed to get 1 million views. And it should. It, it should. should because... Because no one can't get this man to talk. Right, no one. And no we one. done it. And we done and it. We done I don't hear no talk. I don't hear no talk at no one's mouth. But I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't like the way he dissed my man, AJ. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't. But as he said, I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I'm just telling you from a fighter's perspective, from a man who knows boxing. And I'm but one, who are you ringing? I don't knock him. No, no, no. I'm just check. I'm just seeing something right now. I thought you was doing a mad ticket ringing Marvin Hagler. <laughs> Life, God. I don't. I, I won't put nothing past you. Yeah, you know, I'm not like that. But, but, I, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. You can't tell me AJ ain't got no jab, but yeah, he jab off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you can't tell me that. You know, it is. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. He's gonna have to be entitled to his opinion for his accomplishment, yes. Yes. right? AJ does have a jab because yes. and AJ can rough you up when he's ready to rough you up. I'm yes. saying here was a man that went and boxed. Here was a man that boxed in a style alien from his fighting capabilities when he oh, had no. the room. Go on, carry on. Carry on. Like he didn't get AJ on. What's that? But a um, man said Oprah Winfrey was looking to get that interview and she couldn't get it. <laughs> 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 but we've done it. Matt McKenzie's coming in strong today with another donation. 
He says we like AJ. Big up Matt McKenzie. He says we like AJ over here in the state. Okay, let, let me uh, let me read the question. We like AJ over here in the states, but we are just low to the home team. Same way we was low to Tyson over Lennox, Bruno, etc. And you know what? I'm gonna salute you because this is what I'm saying. When you got British people supporting another man, I'm saying, bro, these men ain't supporting you. So why are you supporting them for? You got to go with your home team. So I'm not backing Fury. Uh, I'm not backing Wilder against Fury or AJ against Fury or AJ against Wilder. I'm backing the whole fight. When it's two homegrown men, then I have to give my honest opinion. And um, it's great, but that's good to know, uh, Mac. Um, that there are people yeah. over in the state. He says, get Nigel Ben on. Nigel, yeah, Nigel's a good one. Nigel's a good one. Nigel's a good one. Nigel's a good one. Uh, you know what I mean? We're getting him best him up. That's all we're going to do. Right, so, <laughs> Nigel, Nigel's not hard to get. He's my bridging. Big up. Yeah. More, so, more so, it's like, and the next thing, what's that? Um, Chris Congo is now fighting, was it Michael McKinson? Yes, because of us. I'm just right. going to keep it real. It's because keep, of us. It's because of us. And yes. remember, his dad was begging, man, you know. Oh, Spence, please, can you give my son some exposure? Oh, Spence, we bust your son. No one ever know your son before he coming out. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know what? You know what? Sorry, sorry to cut you. But Michael Boofer said we got to get Wilder on the show. But I know you, you and Wilder's got beef. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Even though, oh. even though we've got beef, it's, it's not hard because I know Bear Man at nine very well. So yeah, it wouldn't, wow. wouldn't be hard because while the keeps on going, like he thinks that I've got that I've got that I've got beef with him. I ain't gonna beef yeah. with him. Yes. Right? I ain't gonna beef with him. I'm just keeping this thing one hundred. I ain't gonna no, no, no. be on to Wild. Bro, I might have to phone up Sam Watson and try and get off. So I might have to use my black book and get wilder in the show. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But I know Bear Man at nine. Seven eight knows him well. That he's got a couple guys at nine well. Ah, uh, what's that? Stephen Stephen Bailey says the thing's going out too far. Uh, what Stephen Bailey say? He say like, could you, yeah, could you get Antonio Gogo on the show? That'd be a good one because he's got. I think he would be really interested interview from being a successful Olympian to having his career cut short with eye injury, and I think that'd be a good one. I mean, you know what? We might have to draw him up. I mean, I know Antonio. Yes. Lovely guy. He's doing wrestling now out in America. Um, that's what he's doing right now. So, yeah, I mean, it'd be a good one. He's beefing up now as well. I remember, what was it? Oh, bloody hell. It's three years ago now. Three years ago, uh, when I hosted Les Brown, the motivational speaker, and his agents then were Wasserman, and they phoned me up and they said, oh, is it possible, could I get some tickets for Anthony? I said, that's my now. I remember bringing yes. him I gave him VIP tickets as well to sit down with, and he got to speak with Les Brown, the legendary motivational speaker. If you guys don't know who Les Brown is, get to know, go jump on, go jump and listen to him on YouTube. He's the most listened to motivational speaker on YouTube. This is not talk, this is actual facts. Um, more than Tony Robbins and more than uh, Eric Thomas, none of them guys compared to Les Brown on the numbers, and numbers don't lie. So Les Brown must be saying something right. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to holler um, Antino Gogo. That was a good question. So I'm going to holler him. Good stuff. Um, Rav86, um, he says, big up the show. You've done it again. Bring on the next one. AJ on the show to talk the Fury fight would be, um, would be amazing. Mark Duck on my question and left. Get Lennox Lewis on. <laughs> Listen, everyone, bro, the thing about it, everybody wants to come on this show. Everyone wants to come on this show, but we're just going to take time, take it easy with these with these guys. Yeah. And, 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 and let, you know, well, it, they can hit us up. They got Spencer's number. They got my number. Uh, and we'll get them on. We'll try to contact them as well. But, you know, uh, this interview. I mean, Sugar Hill, someone's saying get Sugar Hill on the. On that would be a good one. That would be a good yeah, one. Sugar Hill would be a good one. Knowledge. Yeah. You know what? That'd be a good one. I'm gonna holler him still. I'm gonna holler Sugar Hill. Yes. I mean, yes. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm just grateful that Mark Brunner has never given an interview since yes. his mother hasn't spoken on none of the allegations and all the rest of it. And what, what, yes. What. 
So, yeah. And let me just say this. The few interviews I've seen with Mark Breland, never have I seen Mark Breland stand up <laughs> and start showman moves. I've never seen it. Never. Yeah, Mark, Breland, I, Mark Breland is a, is a very reclusive human being. In fact, so, in fact, I've never even seen him smile until he come true. on with us. Very I've true. never seen him smile. Very true. Same, same with Duke McKenzie. McKenzie. Yeah. Very Same true. with Johnny Nelson. It's all of them. Very true. Because energy I, I, goes I, I, I energy you, I guarantee you, I'm going to get a text from Spencer Oliver. Oh, yeah, Spence. Keep it more for No. 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 Man's team, but yeah, they do, but they don't want to call your name on their team. No. Yes, yes, move. Yes, I'll no give it more of that. No more of that. Yeah, yeah, you want to just use our powers to big up your team and don't want to give us no respect. No, no, no. Don't get tell them when they ask you for these guys' numbers, tell them to phone me. <laughs> yeah, say tundi has got a black book this week. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, let's carry on because I've never seen a lot of get my life done. <laughs> yeah. Um uh Reese James said he saw the bars release a short Twitter clip today. I'm not too sure what that's about, but I saw yeah, Matt McKenzie. Thing. I don't know exactly what it was and all the rest of it. Um I haven't looked at it neither. Um not that I don't follow the bar because we both follow each other. Um yes. but uh, I've heard that now he's employed Mark Tibbs as his trainer. Interesting. So it is what it is, but this is not, today it's not about the Bois talk. Yeah, in no way. This is about Mark Breland and the current heavyweight division on and, and, and Guan. Big up Matt McKenzie, another $5. He said, here's another $5 for a great show, a just cause. Trust me. Love from Brooklyn, NYC, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Thank you. Yeah, love Thank you, man. And you know, you know you. I love Brooklyn so much? Not because <laughs> of Mike Tyson, but because of yes. Captain America. Captain America's <laughs> from Brooklyn, bro. Come on. Come on. Hey, let me tell you something. Hey, Gary, we got enough clickbaits. We got enough clickbaits for this show here, you know. Because Mark Breeder said he will punch. He said he'll punch Floyd in the shoulder. <laughs> He said, he, said, he said, by the fourth round, man, he ain't got no shoulder, man. <laughs> but said, by the but, fourth uh, round. Look at Steve Bailey says, get to Gary Lennon. That's kind of cool, you know. Hey. That wouldn't be hard to do. Yeah, because they, they, they don't respect the Sugar Ray Lennon like he were a great. They're not respecting him. They're no, not they're not. Him. You know why? It's because of Floyd Mayweather. Mm. You know what I mean? Because we're living now in a in a society where we don't like to give back to the elders or or to honor the elders, and because we're living like that now, uh, man saying sugar and nah, like Jermaine, there's bear shows. I mean, we might have to get Eddie Hearn on after he leaves Sky. <laughs> there you go again. Right, you're talking right. about you're, you're you're saying things that haven't happened yet. Tundi, Tundi, <laughs> you can't That's say it. it. It ain't happened yet, Spence. I don't argue. I don't argue. Ask, ask from the Ingle what happens when you go against what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, no, no. I know. I, 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 you know, I, I want to see it first. I'm not in that talking what might happen. Let me see it first. Um, but, yeah, anyway, let's go. Everyone smash the like button, please. There's 210 people in the house, so I'm expecting to see 210 likes minimum. So please, yeah. um, um, I've only got uh, 12 minutes on there anyway. Yeah, 12 minutes left. Keen Bree said, What the F y'all talking about, man? America loves Sugar Ray Lennon. Well, I ain't seen them on no broadcasts. I ain't seen no broadcasts no, recently. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I don't, they go don't, on, go they on. don't love Sugar Ray no more. <laughs> Come on. Right? They don't. They don't. You know why they don't? I know they don't. Sugar Ray Lennon was working on his own. Is he working on his own anymore? Come on. Come on. Talk the thing. You know what I mean? Sugar Ray Lennon. Is he working he, on Showtime? Right, yeah, Sugar Ray Lennon when he's on HBO. After 1989, he went on HBO no more. Come on, talk to Tink Spencer. Right, the knowledge. You're talking to, it's me you're talking to. So, so what I'm telling you, like, Ray, Ray Lennon has, has <laughs> not, has not uh, 
being respected in the way that he has because it was the case of they needed somebody to appeal to the younger fans. And no one can tell yeah. me, um, Jake, the snake, what's his name? You know that guy who's on the thing? <laughs> yeah, the Latin snake. The Latin snake. The, yeah, 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 like, yeah. The Latin voodoo snake <laughs> is, more, is, more, is more appealing than Sugar Ray Leonard. No Sugar, way. Right, Sugar Ray Leonard would just have to turn up and it'd be right, you're Ray Leonard. Rayland was calling fights for PBC. He ain't doing it no more because the younger generation don't hold on to 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 to, to that lineage anymore because yeah. we're gassed by the Floyd Mayweather uh, lineage now. So yeah. because we're gassed by the Floyd Mayweather lineage, we're saying, ah, oh, Sugar Land, nah, that's how it is now. Or they're looking at the fact yeah. that, oh, well, you know, Sugar Land lost three times, nah. Like, that That means, like, he can't fight. Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah, because it's and a numbers game. It's ever do it. But it's a um, numbers game. Right, it's a, it's a numbers thing. And unfortunately, unfortunately, these young cats just don't know. You know what I mean? But, but they don't know. But now they are going to know because of the must knowledge and to their day. And the fight is right. And Gary Blake. Because we're keeping them alive. Exactly. So, and when people are talking about, oh, well, Ray Lennon should be doing this and doing that. He shouldn't. He should, Ray Lennon don't have to do none of that. You know why? Because Ray Lennon was the first professional boxer. Yeah? to earn in excess of $100 million. The first. He should be resting up on the Caribbean beach. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so Ray Leonard ain't shy of, of money. And also, if you read Ray Leonard's book, The Big Fight, which I reckon that you guys should read. It's an excellent his autobiography. It was an excellent autobiography. And he's saying at the time when he was going through uh, um, drink and drug abuse, right, that it was about the ego, and now he's become humbled. So he's not really running after that glitz and that glass and anything else because he knew of the time when he was, he said he was Ray Leonard and then he was Sugar Ray Leonard. He said he didn't want to be Sugar Ray. He's happy now just to be Ray Leonard. The Ray yes. Leonard that is the humble family man and everything else. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a transformation, which is also an amalgamation of the two characters of what he was. So you have to remember at the time when Ray Leonard turned professional in 1976, his first professional fight was against a man called Louis the Bull Vega, right? Come on, I've got the tape. Oh, well, I know you've got <coughs> the tape. I had every single one of Sugar Ray Leonard's fights on VHS. That's video. Yeah. I'm explaining what VHS to my son was, and he's looking at me like I was smoking crack. Right. No, I've I've got every single one of his fights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you have your feet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And 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 in th in that fight, Ray Leonard earned forty thousand dollars for his first professional fight. That is yes. nearly fifty years ago. Work wow out right because I'm telling you this now. I know British fighters right now are turning pro, not even getting forty pounds. <laughs> yeah. you, you fight was for forty dollars. Who are you telling? Right. Ray Leonard's first, his first world title fight against Wilfred Benito, um, November 1979, he got $1 million. Yes, yes. All right. So I don't want to end on talk out of nothing. Second fight, his second fight, in, his, his second fight in against Dave Boy Green, where he knocks him out. And that's, to me, that's one of the great performances of Ray Leonard's career. It was absolutely incredible in that fight where he knocks out Dave Boy Green with a left hook, which was vicious. It was like a gunshot. He got he got two and a half million dollars for that fight. Mm. fight. After that, so his third fight in now, his third fight in against um, yeah, his third fight in what was that May or was it June? Now I think of, yeah uh, of nineteen eighty when he fights Roberto Duran, he got nine point five million dollars. Are you listening? Come on. Come on. Are you listening to me, Edson? Yeah, yeah, I, I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> Tony, that's 41 years ago. <laughs> All right. So when guys, this is what I'm trying to say. This younger generation, don't check the history, that there's certain people who came in, right, and 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 made things reality. Because even more so, when um, t uh, Sugar Land fights Tommy Hearns the second time in, in June of 1989, yes. he around and said, soon... Not in a not in a distant far distant future, somebody will earn over a hundred million dollars a fight. And in that fight, he got 15 million dollars, right? 
And he said, yeah. two, they will earn in excess of a hundred million dollars, right? Well, he yeah. predicted the coming of Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, he yeah, the money yeah. that we're going to be generating through pay per view. So they yeah. should be honored. So it's a shame that he's not, but he should be. <laughs> Sorry, uh, wait a minute. Some, some of these topics should continue on Clubhouse. We can debate. That's actually good. We might we might do that. Yeah, we yeah. Might do that. We might do one. Uh, Maybe this but, but, weekend. Well, we have to go back to some of uh, Mark Breeder's topics here. Yeah? Mark Breeder said he could be Andy Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. He said he could be AJ. Fam, I'm, listen, Mark, I admire you, sir. No, uh, that's a sound bite to push out there, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the kick, mate. That's yeah. the kick, mate. Yeah. But, Mr. Breeden, I'm just telling you now, listen, that it might not be good for your health if you get in the room with AJ right now. Because you said you could be Anthony Joshua right now, fam. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Hold on. Hold on. he says <laughs> he likes Leonard. It was just that he was a low key hater of the Tyson, Tyson of the world. Yes, I always embraced the younger generation, but Leonard did it. It's weird that you say that because I said I'm, I had I did a talk recently about being embraceatory of the younger generation and wanting them to the party. Um, you know what? What I realize is this, and this is what I realize. I'm gonna I'm not mentioning no one's name. But I do know of a former undisputed world champion. And it's seemingly like he's not embraced the tour of nobody to surpass him neither. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. Not for his name, but Tony knows it is. Right? Yeah. Hold, hold on. Wait there. Let me just let me just hold up this little you here. Sammy Ali. Let me tell you something. Because you're a youth boy to me. <laughs> you understand? You're younger. And you're getting brave because you're getting on a little Shan's channel and opening up your voice right now. But let me tell you something, young man. There's a thing called respect. And respect is when an older man is talking to you. See, you're getting me happy. Now you're getting a serious, a different side of me. Because I'll just block you off this thing and you will never talk again on my thing. Because I'm not Lady Shan. <laughs> I'm Man Tundi. So, so let me tell you something. The reason why I never spoke like this in front of him is because I've got respect for the man. But I'm also a realist. So there's certain things that I can't really change a man. When a man has a view, he's a fighter, he has an opinion. He has an opinion, and you have to respect that opinion. I've got my own opinion. Now, I could be all disrespectful. If I was, if I was so upfront with a man, he probably wouldn't even give us an hour and a half. So this is how you talk to people, and you should learn this. You don't just run up everything that's in your mouth when you're speaking to people. You learn how to talk to them. So let me just address that. And if you run up your mouth with me again, you will never be on this channel ever again. So yeah, carry on, Spencer. Let me just deal with these young boys. All right, and may oh, I reiterate that respect is earned and not bestowed. Exactly. Right? And when we look at the resume of Mark Breeden, like we read off, then he has earned our respect. Wow, well, you can't just go run up, you can't be running up your mouth. He's earned our respect. And the thing yeah, about a man's come out of his way to jump on our team, right? And he's never done that before with anybody. So don't right. you no. come in there talking. Look, you're getting me hyped now. Don't you come in there talking nonsense. Nah, man's trying to be an idiot to him. Nah, I'm too rude, yeah. nah, fam. <laughs> Sammy Ali, if I, if I get any more nonsense from you, it's straight blockage. You know I don't play. I play, I joke, and everything like that. I'm just trying to show people a different... It's not everything about being serious. It's about asking the right questions, no. which I feel I did. Joe, which M I feel I did. And big up for the five pounds donation. Peak for peak, I think Pernell, meaning Pernell Sweet Whitaker, yes. will beat Floyd too. P.S. His pen work example was a little. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something. If I was disrespectful and confrontational to Mr. Breland, you wouldn't have got that pen work exhibition. No, brother. You wouldn't have got it. So I think you watched you, you know, before that. <laughs> yeah, he was watching me on the pads. <laughs> before he done that, Gary, the producer, you have to put that as a little clip of, of Breeden doing pad work. Bro, he, the guy's a legend. I don't care what anyone tells me. The guy is a legend. And again, I'm going to say this over and over again. We are blessed to have a five-time Golden Glove champion, a two-time WBA champion, 
an Olympic gold medalist. The, the man is a, a truly, truly amazing. And you know he's old school. He's got his old school uh, thoughts and opinions. And um, listen, man, he, he, as he said, everything was right with him and Wilder until he lost. And there are a lot of fighters that, that we're special. He's still bent up laughing for. There's a lot of fighters. <laughs> There are a lot of fighters that can't take a one defeat. Once they lose once, that's what he did. <laughs> no, Spencer, you're too slow. He wasn't doing it like that, Spencer. He was going to, he was going to, the man stand up, you know. <laughs> Hey, what? You lost that for two hours, man. <laughs> he stood up. He stood up. He stood up and done pants. He stood up and done pants. No, but Spence, on a rule, it's a two hour mark now. Um, um, listen, man. Uh, 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 but yeah, let, let, let's just wrap it up here now. It's been a great show. We've actually exceeded ourselves because we've gone on 30 minutes longer than what we thought we was going to have. You know, yeah. we, did, we actually didn't think uh, we would have Mark on, or Mr. Breeland, as I like to call him. We didn't think that we would have Mr. Breeland on for that amount of time. Um, uh, and, uh, and again, I I'm very thankful that he joined us. And um, thank you for you coming on as, as usual, Spence, and, and lighting us up. And, and, and educating us with certain things. Spence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Sam Yali. Yeah, big up, my young man. Mm. But I'm, we're, you're teach, we're teaching. You know, one thing about me, when I was younger, I'm listening. And all thoughts and opinions in my head, I kept to myself. I didn't go run up my mouth with no elders. You understand? I learned to hold my tongue. When I've got of age now, then I started to talk. You can't tell me. You're a young boy, 15, 16 years old. You can't tell me what to do. Who do you think this is? <laughs> but anyway, Samuel Lee, I know you're a good one. I know you're uh, a young uh, boxer who wants to take the sport seriously and you love boxing. Um, but yeah, I hope you learned something as well tonight, young man. Um, Stephen Bailey said, uh, Spencer turned Gary. Thanks for another great show. Looking forward to the next one. Yeah, Spence. definitely, man. I think like we're gonna all get on that. All right. Yes. So, yes. And in closing, my brother from another mother, the master genius, Bob Tony Ajayi, says, "Come on, come on. The people know by now. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, I'm gonna keep up my, my, my headphones on. Dream it, believe it, become it. Come on down. I'm pleased to yes. everybody who joined the show. Catch us next week." We'll grab some people in for you. Peace, two fingers, I'm out.